<laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and pray, guys. Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be here tonight. And uh, we pray, Lord, your word would go forth and that you would speak to our hearts. And uh, also for the children's ministry, that you would uh, be with them, Lord. Bless their time, that they would be... Um, that there would just be an attention alert there, and <laughs> that they would uh, uh, continue to learn and just fall more in love with you, Lord. Same with us as well. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You guys are good. And um, how about we just jump into it? If you guys got your Bibles, uh, turn to Leviticus 17. Um, we'll just go ahead and start Make sure I get this going. And I think, again, what I'm going to do is we'll open this week uh, study up to uh, an open study. So if you guys got any questions, don't feel bad to ask. Go ahead and ask. And Actually, i got a smaller study, so otherwise we're only going to be like 15 minutes and we're done. So <laughs> yeah, right. I'd be a good thing yeah, for right. some of you. <laughs> Well, I drove a long way. It better last more than 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask a lot of questions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Keep it going. All right. Well, actually, let's pray one more time. Lord, thank you again. And uh, we do ask, Lord, that you would... Uh, you would speak to our hearts, Lord. That is our desire. We come together uh, not to, to have any other reason, Lord, but to come uh, to draw near to your word, Lord, to, to hear what your word says, to embrace your word, uh, to be prepared, Lord, to uh, receive it and obey uh, what your word says. And so uh, guide us, Lord, as we get into your truth. And I pray, Lord, that your your word would, would definitely educate us, Lord, and... Uh, Allow your word just to come alive within our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, if you guys remember last week, we talked about the Day of Atonement, which was the, um, well, the sixth feast out of the seven major feasts that the children of Israel uh, would celebrate. Yom, Yom, uh, I just say Day of Atonement. Never mind. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> uh, and so on that day, that, that high and holy day, if you will, you remember the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies. So uh, here you got, you know, the tabernacle, and then you enter in, and then inside you got that first room, and then the second room is the Holy of Holies. And they, high, the one high priest would only enter in once a year into that last room. So... Uh, nobody else would be allowed in, uh, otherwise they'd probably just drop dead if they did, right? So, um, and we learned that um, Jesus ultimately is our, um, <clears throat> well, you think of the Day of Atonement, right? When he comes in, sprinkles of blood to atone for the sins of the nation of Israel. Jesus is our ultimate, um, he really fulfills the Day of Atonement, if you will, the, the, the whole feast speaks of him, and so... Um, in fact, in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus says, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So uh, we do see in this, this feast specifically that Jesus is, again, the fulfillment of the Day of Atonement. And so now in chapters 17 to 27, um, we're actually entering into the last section, if you will, of the book of Leviticus. And <clears throat> this final section, uh, some would refer to it as the holiness code, right? So we're entering into some special zone here. And, and if there's you know, one main encouragement, if you will, one main thing that's being pushed from chapter 17 to 27 uh, is going to be all about the holiness of God, right? To be holy. Um, and that's really what it's all about, to be holy. In fact, the key verse in Leviticus uh, would be Leviticus 19, verse 2, where it says, Speak to all the children of Israel uh, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And so that's the key theme. And in fact, we're going to see that theme uh, now, specifically, uh, more so, we've been seeing it, right, as we've been going through Leviticus. We've been talking about the high priest in the first five chapters, um, the, the nation, right, the people themselves. 
They are all to be consecrated. They are to be holy unto the Lord. They are not to do these things. They are to do these things. And, and all of it was for the purpose of being holy unto the Lord. And so we're going to see it even more so, I, I would say, amplified uh, from chapters 20, uh, 17 and 27. So, um, and, and God's going to talk about a lot of stuff. He's going to talk about ceremonial laws, moral laws. He's going to talk about the, uh, the civil laws, if you will. And, but the common thing, over and over again, even though they're talk, he's talking about different things, is to be holy. And so it's interesting how uh, the world, uh, they say to be happy, right? But biblically, what does the word say? To be holy. Huge difference there, right? To be happy is to run after fame and rock and roll and, right? popularity or uh, things like that, uh, but in the Word of God, it's, it's positionally, right, we're in Christ Jesus. Hi, Kevin! <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so, uh, and, and by the way, that's what the word holy simply means, right? Being set apart for the Lord, right? Being consecrated unto the Lord. Being different from the rest of the world is the word holy. So, um, I think when we've tasted and seen that the Lord is worthy, um, then we're, we really realize that, um, it, you know, it's, it's, that's our goal is to live a life that is holy, right? I was talking to somebody today and they reminded me of people that are actually pursuing the ways of the world, right? They're, they, they just, they think that they're going to be right in God's eyes because they did, Right? And that's the key word, they did. Right? Uh, and this or that or this or that. And they want to perform for the Lord by being religious in a sense, right? And and I think one thing that you guys probably realize in most of my the teachings that you guys are hearing is about God's grace, right? That, that's kind of my my style. I don't know if you guys have caught it yet. Um, some people have a, their style is they bring up creation. It doesn't matter what they're talking about, right? They could be in anywhere in the Bible, and they're like, creation! And then look, turn back to Genesis, and it's like, whoa! Some are about prophecy, some are about uh, the gospel, right? It doesn't matter what they're saying, they're like, the gospel, Jesus! And that's kind of where I love to, to kind of stay there as well. Uh, in fact, Paul, that was his style, right? He always brought up the grace of God and brought it back to the gospel because... That was his passion, right? And that's what he spoke about. Uh, King David, he was a, you know, he took care of the sheep, but he loved music, right? He played with music. In fact, he was one of the most talented that when King Saul uh, was, was just had that, um, what is that, uh, uh, the stressful spirit, I forget what it's called. Anxiety and yeah. anger and yeah. jealousy. They called him musician. Who was the best that they could call? King David. Right? It wasn't that before he was a king. Uh, and the Lord had plans, so David was able to hear how the king interacted with others and did things. But anyways, David talked about music, right? So, interesting. So there's a lot going on there, but um, I, I think we realize that the Lord is definitely worthy of us living a life that is holy, right? Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 um, Paul even says, I beg you, I beseech you, right, to, um, the idea there is to realize it's the word of God that transforms us, right? It's the word of God that renews us, uh, really to live a life unto the Lord. It's a sacrifice, uh, but it's, it's, it's a worthy cause. And one day, guys, we're all going to be together one day, and we're going to be singing holy, holy, holy to the Lord God Almighty, right? And, and so for us, it's a no-brainer. To the world, they don't understand that. They're like, why would you sing holy to the Lord? But, it, but it's a lack of knowledge, all right? They just don't know. They're, yeah. The Holy Spirit uh, spoke to our hearts on it, but uh, they just don't know. I, I, I tried talking to someone recently, and they are clueless to anything biblical, and yet they, they claim to be a Christian, and it's like, uh, how do you get through to somebody like that, right? They think they got it all together, but they don't. They're so far from, and they, they actually don't know the scripture. And they're contradicting it by saying they want to, you know, doing this for salvation. And I paid this much money, you know, to the church so that so-and-so who's dead can be, go to heaven. And it's like, what? <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so crazy. But, but it's... Uh, and by the way, keep in mind, 
it, it's a daily choice that we have, <clears throat> you know, to live after the Lord. It daily we're to die to ourselves, right? Uh, to our own ways, and, and, and our heart's desire should be saying, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. And, and so it, it's aligning our will with his will. And, and really, even if you don't understand it, right, you understand it or not, um, those are the times you still, Lord, your will, not, not my will. Not what I think, not what I feel, not what I, uh, right? Because our emotions can lead us down the drain, <laughs> right? Uh, and we got to stick to the word of God nonetheless. And so it's Jesus's blood, and you guys know this, right? That was imputed to us on the cross, therefore making us holy. Did you guys catch that? It's Jesus who made us holy. It wasn't Jesus that said, if you live a life for this many years following me, Right? And, and without any failed attempts, then you reach this status quo of holiness, right? This stage of all. None of that stuff is in the Bible. It was what he did once and for all upon the cross that made us positionally uh, right with God holy. In fact, um, so daily we're to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, right? But uh, why? I think Galatians 5, um, oh yeah, there's that other verse. <laughs> 517, it says, for the flesh lusts against the, uh, the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Guys, we are on a constant daily battle uh, between the flesh and the spirit, right? Between making a decision on a daily basis, but even if you make the right decisions daily, does that make you holy? No. Right? What made you holy? Jesus upon the cross made you holy, right? So positionally, we're right with God. It's, it speaks of that sonship, right? You're a child of God. If you're a child of God, you're always a child of God. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a hard one to chew on. It's something you gotta, you know, kind of go over and, and, and you gotta, as a Berean, look at certain scriptures and be like, whoa, the prodigal is still a child of his father nonetheless, right? So it's it's very interesting. Um, I'm not saying a whole bunch there, too, at the same time, so we can talk about that later. But anyways, um, keep in mind our performance, our, uh, our decision makings does not make us more holier, right? It's what Jesus did upon the cross. That, there's a reason why I'm stressing that. Because uh, some people don't get that. Now, simple grace really works, right? It's all about Jesus and not about us. Uh, our part, our work was saying, Lord, I believe, right? And you allow, you receive, in a sense, by um, living for him. But he does all the work in through us. So let's go ahead and get started. As we begin this section, um, on this last section, if you will, from 17 to 27, on holiness, um, here in chapter 17, we're going to see... I, I think as I was reading through, is I really just see two main things that really stood out to me um, that I think the Lord uh, wants to speak to us as well. The first is the sanctity of food. The sanctity of food. This is an interesting passage here in verses 1 to 9. Uh, food is to be holy. It's to be set apart. Uh, so let's go ahead and read in verse 1. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, to his sons, and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, Whatever man of the house of Israel who kills an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp, and the, and the emphasis there is basically any, any animal, right? Um, it says, or, or who kills it outside the camp. And... <coughs> does not bring it to the door of the tabernacle of meeting uh, to offer an offering to the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord. The guilt of bloodshed shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and the man shall be cut off from among his people. So any animal uh, that is killed outside of the camp, uh, or even inside the camp, uh, that does not bring that animal, specifically it says right here, the three animals, right? But um, if, if they don't bring that animal and they kill it to the door, the door would be, you know, don't go inside the tabernacle, but bring it to the door, 
the priest will take it and they'll they'll they're going to use it as a um, kind of like a free will offering, peace offering, right to the Lord. Uh, but if they don't do that, it's basically capital punishment, and that person is deserving of death. Uh, and there's a reason why. So we're, it's going to explain itself, right? The, the best commentary of the Bible is actually the Bible itself, uh, and so it always explains itself. Notice. Um, so let, let's look at. I, I see three reasons here. Why we should, uh, or the children of Israel, were to kill an animal outside or inside, and they were supposed to bring it to the door of the tabernacle. Three reasons that I see here. Uh, number one involves fellowship with the Lord. Fellowship with the Lord in verses 5 and 6. Um, look at verse 5. It says, To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, to the priest, and offer them as peace offerings to the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and burn the fat for a sweet aroma to the Lord. So according to verse 5, go back over to verse 5, in the very beginning it says to the end right in other words here's the reason you just can't go and kill any animal uh, inside the camp or outside the camp uh, and you have to bring it to the door of the tabernacle according to verse 5 it's so that the children of israel can bring it to the door of the tabernacle of meeting as a peace offering right so that speaks of uh fellowship with the, the, the lord if you guys remember in leviticus um Chapter 3, we talked about, I guess you could say more in detail uh, about this, uh, the peace offering. Uh, we went into a whole bunch of detail about it, but the idea there, one, I guess you could say one important um, aspect of the peace offering uh, was that when the worshiper brought the meat there at the door of the tabernacle, um, it, it was barbecue time, right? <laughs> they, I mean, the, the, you know, obviously the blood gets sprinkled, but... Uh, you know, the priest would cut it up, and there's certain parts that go to the Lord, and certain parts go back to the worshiper. Uh, but the other parts go specifically, remember we talked about like the fat, uh, other parts go specifically to the Lord. And so as they're burning up to the Lord, as an aroma to the Lord, the worshiper is also eating. Uh, and it spoke of fellowship, right? Oneness, unity with the Lord at the same time. So, um, so in a sense, it's... It's like they're eating with the Lord. And, and in the Jewish mindset, uh, when they eat with somebody, what they're saying is, I'm like-minded with you. I, we're one, right? In mind and heart. We're in agreement with each other. Therefore, I sit with you as family is the idea. So if a Jewish person ever invites you to their house, see it as an honor, right? Like, wow, thanks, right? Because it speaks loud and it volumes what, if they do allow you in. So... Uh, and it, so it's talking about an agreement with them, right? Fellowship with the Lord. Uh, and, and by the way, this is what the Lord desires of all of us, right? Not to be religious, uh, but to have that relationship with Him. Just to dine with Him and hang out with Him and talk with Him. Be a friend, right? Um, with the Lord. Obviously understanding He is the Lord. <laughs> so having fellowship, unity with Him. They, they had, by the way, so think about it. They... Killed an animal uh, a couple miles down, right? And they had to travel all those miles. If you guys have shot deer, right? I, I shot a deer what, my first time, and I had, and then I had to drag it. The guy was like, you know, Eric, you get there. He's like, all right, pick it up and let's let's carry it over. I was like, what? <laughs> and good thing there was all snow, so I was able to like, it was like a sled. But man, how, how are I don't know how they did it back then, but. That, take, that takes a lot of work just to go all the way back to the tabernacle, right? If you killed one of these three uh, animals, and, and just so that they, you know, as a peace offering, as a sacrifice to the Lord, it's a lot of work. So today, I, I see it, you know, when we eat food together, um, I usually thank the Lord for the food, um, more so because of the way I was raised. We, at certain times, we just didn't have any food, right? And you, I had to... I had to go through the cabinets and be like, what do we have, right? And I'm looking at, you know, maybe, oh, we got sugar. 
I'll just eat sugar. <laughs> yeah. Horrible stuff. You guys wouldn't believe it. Like you kind of have to do something, though, right? And you're you're hungry. So uh, now when I see food, I'm always thankful. It's like, Lord, thank you, right? Uh, it's a beautiful thing. But um, I think it's okay to thank the Lord for your food. I think it's biblical, right? Jesus even thanked the, the Lord. Uh, but but to, to today, I, I hear people pray, and they're like, Lord. Bless this food. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm trying to find scripture with that, and I think we've all felt guilty about that, right? About I don't know how the Lord blesses donuts, but right? They're already a blessing to me, but uh, I don't know how much of a blessing it is in our stomachs. But I think you think um, bless the food so that my body takes it in and is nourished. I, I think sure. that's probably yep. what they mean. Yep. Because you do hear that a lot. And I, I slipped it out quite a bit as well. Um, I don't know. I, I think that the main thing is just thanking the Lord, right? Uh, and I, there's cert, certain people where it's like, oh, they're going to pray for the food, and they'll get up and give this, like, eloquent speech, right? And then <laughs> ten minutes later, man. Oh, oh, it's cold It's now. Thanksgiving time. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> okay, amen. But, and then there's other people who are like, Lord, thank you for this food. <laughs> Amen. And it's like, wow, okay. Right? But, I mean, that's the whole point of praying anyway. So, it's the Lord who hears our hearts. And sometimes I pray like that, right? I'll, you know, just, thanks, Lord. I'm, there I go, right? I'm eating. So, I don't know. Let's come to the second uh, reason people had to bring their food to the door of the tabernacle uh, when they killed an animal outside or inside of the camp. Uh... And, and so that it would be, uh, there would be food for the priest of the Lord. So that there would be food for the priest of the Lord. This isn't necessarily here in the scripture. It's hidden, if you will, subtle. Um, we, we don't have it in the text. But in dealing, if you guys remember back in Leviticus 3, dealing with the peace offering, we talked about it back then. Because this is the same context, right? Dealing with the peace offering. And so it was an offering uh, where the priest would be given a portion of the food as well, and then they would eat because they'd be hungry. They're smelling all this wonderful barbecue, and they're not allowed to eat, except the peace offering. Then they're like, oh, we can finally eat, guys, this is great. And so um, that's if, if people killed outside of the camp or you know inside the camp, they didn't bring it. I mean, <coughs> the picture of the poor priests are starving to death, right? That's their livelihood if you think about it. They, they didn't make money as the, the priest uh, or uh, go hunting or, or have a, a career. They were the priest, and they, that was their daily duties, doing the service unto the Lord. And so the Lord gave them a portion. Remember, they, the, the, the Levites didn't have a portion of the allotted land, right, that when they div divided it all up. So their portion was the Lord himself, which I think is the best portion. Um, but... Anyway, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 13, he says, Do you not know that those who minister the, the holy things eat of the things of the temple? And, uh, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar. So this was, you know, not only the principle there in the Old Testament, it's the same thing, the same principle in the New Testament as well, uh, which is interesting. So the priest never... Uh, again, they never had a portion of the land. They never had, they weren't farmers. They weren't, you know, uh, shepherds. They weren't, you know, um, uh, blacksmith or anything, right? Making swords or any, anything like that. So whatever food was brought to them, that was their dinner. That was their lunch. That was their breakfast, right? Um, and that was their portion. So, in fact, in 1 Timothy 5.18, uh, in the New Testament, it says, For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it shreds out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. And so it's very biblical uh, from the Old Testament, very biblical from the New Testament. And so uh, those who are given over to ministry, if you will, full-time, um, from the gospel, they get to profit from the gospel, not as... And there's limits, right? That's where I think... Uh, Elders are very wise in the church, right, where uh, they shouldn't go beyond. The pastor shouldn't be getting, I know pastors that are making millions of dollars, literally. I came from a church where they're making millions of dollars, and it's like, wow. I mean, 
you think four boats is good enough, right? Like, wow, and they, oh, I need another one too. What? <laughs> How many vacations out, you know? I think you should, there should definitely be a cap where that the, the pastor or whoever is on staff shouldn't get too much, right? There should be, you should live just like the people in a sense, right? In the fellowship. So, um, there's a whole nother ball game there. Anyways, let's go to the third reason why it's important uh, to bring the food to the tabernacle uh, when you kill, you know, the ox or, or you know, the, the goat or whatever it was. So, um, it involves falling away from the Lord. Falling away from the Lord. In verses 7 through 9, let's just read it first, and then we'll get an idea here. It says, They shall no more offer their sacrifices to demons, after whom they have played the harlots. They, this shall be a statute forever for them throughout their generations. Also you shall say to them, Whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you, who offers a burnt offering or a sacrifice and does not bring it to the door of the tabernacle of meeting to offer it to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from among his people. So if they were uh, killing animals, well, think about a scenario there. If, if the people are killing animals outside the, the camp, right, inside the camp, if you will, uh, the, the tendency... Um, and if they weren't bringing it to the tabernacle, right, the door of the tabernacle, the tendency for them would to be to fall away again. Because what? remember, they came from Egypt. They learned pagan ways. And if they're finding an animal in their backyard, there's no accountability, there's no boundaries, there's no, right, nobody there. They're like, hey, let's offer this to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right? And then they're going to give offerings, you know, to these random gods that don't even, they're make-believe. God's jealousy is going to be stirred up, and he's going to kill them all, right? So this is really there to protect them in their relationship with the Lord, and to protect them from falling away from their relationship with the Lord. And, and so uh, it was almost like a precautionary or a, a boundary, if you will. Um, another translation, by the way, um, going back, because it says um, so that they don't follow demons, right? Um, another translation of that word demon uh, is actually uh, wild goats. And so I looked that up. It was, it was, believe it or not, there's a lot of scripture about wild goats speaking of demonic, though. And so it's not speaking of goats that are just wild. This is speaking of a, a, a pagan entity, if you will, that takes on the figure of a goat. And, and so if you know anything about um, uh, sorcery, witchcraft, right? You get deep into black magic, even white magic, believe it or not. They're all evil. <laughs> um, but but they have goats, right? It's kind of a common thing. They got the, you know, the almost the, the Israel David star kind of, you know, star, and then they got the circle around it. They got the goat's head, a very familiar imagery that a lot of pagans have. Um, and, and so... It's interesting how it says that God is mentioning these demons, these wild goats. And it's not goats, it speaks specifically of wild in nature, not, not a, like a goat, but in, in a figure, if you will. Um, and today, many celebrities, uh, they all have these, these imageries of goats, and uh, they got the 666, and um, one of the recent ones I just saw is Elon Musk. Right for, for Halloween, he's got an upside down cross. He's got the goat. There was a whole bunch of images I was gonna put on, but I felt all whoo, <laughs> so I didn't put it on there. But um, I think you guys get the idea. They idolize this stuff. They drink blood of different animals, of different people. Uh, it's the new latest thing. If you look into celebrities and what they do on their times off, very very demonic, right? Uh, or they, they they call it exotic, right? And and so they're eating weird foods. You, you look at, um, not only Musk, you can think, look at the Amazon guy, Be Bezos, and uh, he eats like, I think it's, oh, don't quote me now, I forget. It's like chameleons and weird reptiles, and they, so they, they eat these weird things, and then their, their, their hunger for weird stuff goes beyond, and then it gets into humans, right? And uh, so there's actually a market for, for human, it's, it's gross. Anyway. You guys get the picture. Um, so let's keep going. In fact, in Hebrews 10.25, it 
It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So uh, it's so important, guys, that we don't isolate ourselves, right? The children of Israel, if they found an animal, they would be, they're isolated, right? Which means they're vulnerable to fall back. Uh, it's so important that they would go to the tabernacle for the sake of accountability. And it's so important for us as a church today as well to be amongst each other, right? To feel that warmth, that embrace, that uh, to hear from one another. There's something that the Lord does with that that a lot of churches realized during, what, the last two years, when a lot of them tried to just go online, only uh, the churches were damaged and hurt. Why? Because we need each other physically, right? Um, there, there's something about when souls are next to each other, um, there's something about it, right? And even scripture kind of lines it up that we should not forsake uh, the assembling of ourselves together. Um, so it's a wonderful thing. So we need to come together uh, to be directed by the Lord, right? By the word of God. And that's why it's so important we teach the word of God um, and that we be directed by the word. So by the way, if we're not coming to church, uh, to learn God's word, um, it's so easy for us to go astray uh, and fall back. We need to be very, very careful, guys, to um, try not to isolate yourself. Some of you guys know that way, right? Maybe you, that was part of your testimony. I was, I was on fire for the Lord, and then this happened. So I isolated myself. Oh, those churches, they're hypocrites, right? They do this, and they say that, and I, I totally understand Right? I understand Christians in ministry, it's, it's not fun at all, but we can't isolate ourselves. And you probably realize that, and you came back, and then you realize the difference that had in your relationship with the Lord. When you're isolated, uh, I know a lot of right-on believers that are no longer believers. They, they believe in the Lord, but they're definitely not living a lifestyle for the Lord. And it, it all happened because they isolated themselves. Uh, when you're isolated, it's, you're, you're, it's so easy for the enemy to come in. And, and devour you in a sense. So we got to be very careful. I'm not saying you're not going to heaven, uh, but you're you're definitely um, not in the right place. <laughs> I would I would be cautious and bring that to the Lord. Um, but it, it it is really really crazy how um, there's churches though that have isolated themselves from the Word of God, and then you see not just individuals in the church, but you see corporate churches actually leaving and falling away from the Lord, or they allow maybe even church voting, right? And, and the whole church is all maybe non-believers. <laughs> and, and then and they, the, the votes sway uh, from what the Bible says. Well, I know the Bible says that, but the church says we need to do this. And so, uh, I mean, it's subtle, but it creeps in, and there's different things and how big churches kind of go down, but um, it, 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 there's, I mean... Oh, I could keep going there, but um, it, it's not about how we feel. It's not about what we think. It's about the Word of God, right? Uh, it's the reason we come together. And by the way, there's there's times when I'm teaching where I want to go way over here, and I just want to complain, right? Or or give facts and details, and but it's not scripture. It's just today stuff right because i was watching the news or whatever right prophecy update and they said and so i'm gonna say it and i'm all excited and then i gotta check my own heart and be like nope you stay in the scripture stay in the scripture it, it, it's the safest and best place to be obviously it's okay to be free right the holy spirit wants to lead you somewhere so you kind of know when it's the flesh and you know when it's the spirit right you're like but it's not bad but it may be bad because it's not the right time, right? It's not something the Lord ministered to you to give to the body. It's something, maybe there's a prideful intention there, right? Like, ooh, I'm going to look pretty good if I say this, right? Uh, and so we got to, it's just, you got to have discernment. So uh, we, we always need to keep the importance on the Word of God. Uh, and so anyways, they had to bring their food to the tabernacle, right? Uh, and that's a good thing. It's always good to obey rather than to disobey, right? Uh, I don't. I don't like consequences. They're not fun. Um, anyways, I said we could break this chapter up in two different areas. Two main things that really stood out. Uh, the first um, involved the sanctity of food. Now, secondly, it involves the sanctity of blood. The sanctity of blood in verses ten to sixteen. Um, 
Actually, let's just read the, all of this, and then we'll go back over. It says in verse 10, and, and whatever man of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell among you, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood, and I will cut him off from among his people, so to kill him. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. Uh, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, No one among you shall eat blood, nor shall any stranger who dwells among you eat blood. Whatever man of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you, uh, who hunts and catches any animal or bird that may be eaten, he shall pour out his blood and cover it with dust. <coughs> it is the life of, the fl of all of us. It's, the, it's blood sustains its life. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all the flesh uh, is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. And every person who eats what died naturally or what was torn by these, whether it, he is a native or your own country or a stranger, um, he shall both wash his clothes, bathe in water, and be unclean until evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he does not wash them or bathe his body, then he shall, be, uh, he shall bear his guilt. Another translation there, guilt is uh, iniquity. Uh, and so here in verses 10 to 16, it's dealing with the sanctity of blood, right? And so since it's, it's, it's blood is holy, right? It's obviously important, right, for life. Uh, but verse 11, notice in verse 11 it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Uh, in verse 14, it says, For it is the life of all flesh. Without uh, blood, obviously we don't have any life, right? And so today... Um, again, um, it's sick. We live in a sick pagan world, guys. It, I mean, they uh, for sport, people drink blood, right? Uh, hunters here in Wisconsin, uh, they, they shoot something. That, oh, you shot it, you got to drink its blood now. Or you got to bite into its heart. Or it's like, what? <laughs> Not going hunting with you. <laughs> but uh, it just, just weird stuff, right? So um, back in the day, they, they used to actually... Uh, uh, just pagan, different uh, pagan uh, religions, they would actually drink blood of an animal or something to try to get some kind of benefit from that animal. So, in other words, they drink the blood of a cheetah so that they can run faster, right? They drink the blood of a rhino because they wanted to be, you know, really strong, and, and maybe the blood of a, a lion for that fierceness, right? And they're like, ah, the rhino got the fierceness, and and so and people's athletes still do this stuff today, which is sick. Um, anyways, uh, so they, what they, they're, they're doing there, though, is they're relying upon the animal uh, to really give them what they think they needed, right? And so they're, they're looking at the blood of the animal and saying, I need that. And so they're going for it, right? And they're going to practice these pagan traditions. The children of Israel started to embrace this kind of stuff. And so in the context here... Uh, God says, don't drink the blood, right? Or only only I can give you what you need. Look to me, don't look to them. And so that, that's where the whole idea of drinking blood kind of came from as the pagans. And so God, God says, hey, trust me for all that you need. I'll provide for you, right? He's the great I am, right? He, he watches over us and he takes care of us. And, and in fact, in Deuteronomy 2.7, at the end there, it says, These 40 years to the children of Israel, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. They lacked nothing. Were they hungry? I mean, they got food from heaven, right? Wow, angels food, literally. And, and I mean, they got water out of nowhere from a rock, right? Only God. Only God. Everything we see that God did for them, only God. The soles of their feet, their shoes, their sandals, right? Never, never died out and fell apart. They traveled for those 40 years, and it's, it was like having brand new shoes every day. Isn't that cool? Um, their clothing, their, I mean, every need that they had, God provided. And so he says, guys, you're mine. We work differently. Your mind should work differently. Your heart should work differently. Your faith should be in me, right? 
and, and don't, don't live and don't practice what these pagans practice. Today, the church needs to do the same thing. We need to put our faith in the Lord. Uh, Jesus, if look at the sparrows, right? I mean, they get their food. Have you guys ever actually watched the birds in the morning? Uh, they're all hungry, and then all of a sudden they go in the grass, and they look down, and all of a sudden, right there, there's a worm. And they pull it up, and they're like, whoa! How did, how did they know there was a worm right there, right? God just naturally provides for them, right? So, same thing with us. So when there's something going on, He will provide for us. Why? Because He's our God, right? He knows what He's doing. Uh, and, and so, we got to be very careful, because we, we not only can put our trust and reliance, if you will, on stuff, right? Uh, but we also we could put it on our financial, right? Like, what do we we could fall back on finance? We could fall back on family, fall back on friends. Uh, they'll take care of me, right? They they I mean they're always there for me. Really? <laughs> I don't know if you have family like I do, but all right. Um, but we we need a very we need to be very very careful, right? God, He wants to be everything to us uh, in our lives and. Uh, we need to give him that, right? So if you have a fallback, uh, cut it off. In fact, one of our fallbacks, before I even got married, I realized my, my, my wife's family actually has money, right? And so I made a commitment to my wife, and I, we said we made a vow. We were not going to ask any money from them at all. In fact, we're not going to get money from them. If we're in need, we're going to trust the Lord. And she's like, okay, we're going to do it. Well, guess what? We had many needs. <laughs> and guess what? Still today, we never called them, never ever said anything. In fact, they know of our commitment, and they still throw it out. They're like, hey, I know you guys need money. Would you guys like, just tell us? And, you know, it's like, no. Oh. Because there's always strings attached, right, with family. At least that's my experience. And um, it, could go, it could go south pretty fast. And so... Um, but I just thank the Lord, right? We're, our, our goal is to trust the Lord. And let's just let the Lord. Uh, David Bernard, you guys look at it up with any missionaries, right? Um, I mean, oh, there's a whole bunch of my brain just went, ah! I mean, if you need milk, right? Let's pray for the milk. What milk? Ding dong! <laughs> and my truck just broke down. I got all this milk. Can you guys use it, right? Uh, let's thank the Lord for the bread, guys. Let's say, what bread? Ding dong! <laughs> got all this bread in my truck. I don't know. Can you guys use it? Yes, thank you, Lord. Right? And so that's faith, right? Thanking the Lord before He even gives it. Uh, that's something I've learned to do to the Lord. Lord, thank you, because I know what you're already going to do, right? Or if I'm praying for somebody for healing, thank you in advance for what you're going to do, whether He's going to heal them or not heal them, right? Nonetheless, thank you, because it's going to be according to your will, right? Be done. And anyways. Um, in, in fact, in, uh, Paul said in Philippians 4.19, he says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Guys, what pagan God can tell you that, right? What, what family member can tell you that? I'll supply all your need. Only our God can say that, right? We don't, we don't need to practice these strange uh, pagan uh, ways for our daily needs. You, you don't need to... Um, Put your teeth under your pillow for the tooth fairy to come, right? <laughs> or, or, or give your list of stuff and wants to your to Santa Claus, or you know what I'm talking about? I mean, is this at home, right? We, we, we do traditional stuff, not even knowing we're doing this stuff, but we, we get from the pagan societies and whatnot, and, and it's like, ah, uh, so, um, oh, so much to say. But think about it if, if we have. What we have, it's because God wanted us to have it. If God takes it away, maybe it's because God didn't want you to have it anymore. You didn't need it anymore. So he took it away. It's okay to learn in our hearts and have that contentment to be like, Lord, I'm okay with whatever, whether you give me or whether you take away from me. Uh, be okay because all that you have should be for the sake of others anyways, right? If you're like me, I got that hoarding effect where I just oh, want it all. <laughs> But I, I, it's a daily thing where we got to keep giving it out, right? You, you hear a need? Oh, we have that. Take it, right? And, uh, oh, there's something that hit me bad. Uh, I got a free fireplace, uh, one of those um, <coughs> pellet stoves, right? It's actually, when I looked up online, it was actually the biggest model they've ever made out of all the different types of stoves. So it was, it was a huge one, big, heavy thing. And I put, you know, the pellets in there. And it wasn't working. The guy was like, oh, you're going to invest so much money into it. You know, it's not even worth it. So I invested, I think it was like $10, uh, two little wires, right? Plugged it in, redid it. 
it worked perfectly. And then uh, somebody told me, oh, I'm building a cabin and I can't find it. I gotta go, go, go buy a wood stove, pellet stove. And I was like, ding, right? You gotta listen for the needs of others. And I was like, that's why God gave me that. I got a stove for you, take it, right? It's such a blessing. Uh, just over and over, have your ears, right? Uh, just alert and ready. And it's, it's good to be a, a blessing, right, to the Lord. Uh, don't be like me, right? Don't tell others because there's no reward in that. <laughs> but, but give it to the Lord when you do. Um, anyways, um, so, oh, by the way, Israel, notice they played the harlot, right? Uh, and, and the harlot, think about it. They were married, if you will, to the Lord. And then here they go giving themselves away to these other pagan gods. They made up statues or whatnot. And it's just really sad, like the church today... Guys, we got to present ourselves blameless and pure and spotless before the Lord. Are you saved? Yeah, probably you are, right? Most likely you're going to go to heaven if you give your life to the Lord, right? If you did. Um, but, I mean, is that good enough for you? Or do you want to present yourselves adorned, right, before the Lord? You want to come before the Lord with the pig's snot and mud all over you, right? Think of a beautiful dress, just all ugly, right, and messed up. I want to come before the Lord adorned, right, and, and, and giving him honor and glory. Um, not that I can in and of myself. Obviously, God at that moment, right, we just learned, presents you holy, which I thank the Lord for that. <laughs> but I definitely want to come in uh, strong past that finish line. So something to pray about. Remember, it's a daily, daily decision. It's not that it's going to make you holier, uh, but your decision makings on a daily basis makes a huge difference. Uh, in your walk with the Lord, right? How do you want to present yourself? Some are going to present themselves uh, with what to offer, and some are going to present themselves with stuff to offer, right? Whatever it might be. So um, it's a good thing. So what, I think when we step back and we take a look at everything, we can see that God is in total control, right? And when you realize he's in total control of everything, life just gets a lot more easier. It really does. Um, you don't need to worry anymore, right? Verse 11, it says, it's the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So it's the blood that covered the sins of the nation of Israel. We learned that last week about uh, the idea of atonement. Atone simply means a covering, right? Their sins were covered. Uh, and remember, um, well, I'll just read it. Hebrews 9, 22, it says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So the blood is important. Not only does it sustain life, uh, but it covers sins. And apart from Jesus Christ, right, in relationship with him, uh, his shed blood there up upon the cross. Guys, there's, there's, a, there's no hope, right, without you being covered by, with his blood. When we're covered with his blood, our sin is literally washed away. It's not covered like those in the Old Testament, like the children of Israel, according to the law so if you want to live according to the law what you're saying is no to jesus and what he did upon the cross right uh which is blasphemy in a sense right uh so you don't want to live according to the law you definitely want to live according to grace right rely upon jesus and his free gift and what he's done for you and i and his performance not our own uh but by grace right simply walking by faith and so in fact john 10 10 uh, Jesus even says, I have come that they may have life, right? And that they may have it more abundantly. So we receive life simply because of the shed blood of Jesus upon the cross. Yeah. I have to interrupt. I was waiting for that word life because we were doing a, um, we were doing a Bible study in John 2. And Jesus was going to the Passover. And I read the commentary that said that when they went to Passover, there were problems because there were tourists from all different areas, and so they didn't know the lay of the land, and so they might step on a, a, a grave and defile themselves before they could even have the wow. celebration. And so Jesus, if you, so the priest whitewashed all of the, the sepulchers, and then Jesus made the analogy to the, uh, the Pharisees 
that they were like the whitewashed sepulchers that looked white on the outside, mm -hmm. but on the inside they were full of dead mm -hmm. man bones. Yeah. And so um, being brought up as a Pentecostal person, you weren't supposed to wear lipstick or any of, uh, you know, earrings, jewelry, oh, it went on and on. Wow. And when you took away the list of things that you couldn't do, well, and, and now, now you can do them because now you're gonna live by holiness and that would be from the inside, mm. not an outward appearance. Yeah. So making the choice for holiness can be deciding to choose the abundant life rather than death. Jesus called us out to be separate. Mm. And in that process, we are being separated from death because we know salvation gives us eternal life. I just thought it was a beautiful analogy of what holiness was. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, don't nearly, nearly be uh, adorned, you know, the outside, the, the earrings and the, right, the makeup, and, but it's the, the inner, your heart, right, that we, we should adorn ourselves inwardly more so, and that speaks to that true... Uh, it's just it's beautiful, right? When it's on to the Lord, but yeah, He's He's the life that we have, um, which is so good. And, and without Him, guys, we're nothing. I mean, we have nothing, right? We can really consider it. Um, wow, I was gonna say something. I forgot. Does that, somebody want to say something? That's probably why they're like, <laughs> I want to say it. Ah, oh, and I caught it. And I was like, just give them a chance. <laughs> yeah. There's the last verse here is 1 Peter 1.18. Uh, Paul says, um, I'm sorry, Peter, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. And it's so true. There's nothing that we can, uh, again, there's so much religions out there, uh, Mormons, um, uh, uh, Scientology, Catholicism. They say, oh, if, if, uh, if your, your relative died and they're not in heaven, give us your money, right? And, and then we'll do this and this, and then you, they go to heaven. And, and, and there's people that buy the lie who are deceived on a daily basis, uh, thinking that they can profit, right, with the, their valuables uh, and somehow gain some kind of entrance. That's a lie. Don't believe it. The, the, the wolves are the only ones biblically that are in it for themselves, right? They want profit off of you, the body of Christ, the church, the sheep. Uh, those who are true shepherds, they don't want what you have. They, in fact, they want to bless you with more. They want, to, they want you to profit, right? They don't fleece the sheep, if you will. Uh, and so we got to be very <coughs> cautious with um, just the, uh, around us. Here in Appleton, I you know, run into people a lot when they have this mindset of like, oh, I'll be fine, my family will take care of it. What do you, could you, could you, could you mind me asking, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, if I die, then they, they got money and they can pay the, the priest. And Wait, what? <laughs> I thought we were on the same page. You were saying, praise the Lord, yes, I believe in Jesus, but yet you're mocking him by, <laughs> right, choosing to live this life contrary to what Scripture says. Again, guys, we can't, we can't grocery shop our faith, right? Our faith is in the Word of God. What the Word says let it be, right? Don't argue with it. Don't uh, try to make it seem what it's not. And um, we need to be very careful with our teachers too, whoever's teaching us. We gotta take it back to scripture um, and, and make sure it lines up with scripture. So um, anyways, yeah, there's so much to say. Uh, but, but again, Jesus is obviously our life and, and don't take it for granted. I thank the Lord literally on a daily basis, guys. We have so much more. Uh, then we realize in Christ Jesus that, um, I mean, we're not even tapping into all the resources that we have, right, spiritually, and uh, there's so much. So um, definitely be blessed. Be careful with legalism, uh, like Dora was talking about, right? There's a lot. If you're not wearing a skirt, right, oh, you're a sinner. <laughs> what? Right? Uh, there's all these rules, and if I'm not wearing a tie right now, uh, then God hates me basically and that's kind of the attitude it's like wow it doesn't even say tie or skirt in the Bible what are you talking about right like we so bring it back to scripture um, and keep it there it's always a good place anything else before we pray any questions
Well, it went a little longer than 15 minutes. Okay, <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven o'clock. You did wow, good. we're doing good. <laughs> All right, so well, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you so much uh, for this time, and thank you uh, that we're able to get through chapter 17. And, and what a reminder, um, Lord, not only of the food for the children of Israel, and uh, speaking of the accountability, the, the boundaries, Lord, that they had, and the, uh, the way the, the priests were able to... Uh, have their livelihood, right? Uh, for the meat that came their way, they were able to eat and be alive, and um, and also the blood, Lord, to abstain from the blood and um, not eating the blood and like like the pagans, and but looking to you, Lord, to provide to to satisfy. Uh, your word says that in your right hand are pleasures forevermore, Lord. And may we trade the things of this world, Lord. May we trade the the pleasures of the, the things of this world and sacrifice, Lord, uh, until we come into your presence in our glorified bodies, Lord, and may we benefit um, then. And so I pray that you would be our all in all. Satisfy us, Lord, um, with more of you, uh, lest we fall back like the children of Israel uh, and try to satisfy ourselves with the things of this world, Lord, with the flesh, with uh, what the enemy has in store for us. I pray, Lord, that you would be our accountability, Lord, that you would uh, allow us, Lord, to be uh, transparent, Lord, uh, by, by keeping that, that accountability with other believers around us as well. And so uh, do a mighty work within our hearts, Lord, uh, that we might continue to live for you uh, and strive, Lord, to, to uh, enter in um, for the upward prize that we have in you. So thank you, Lord, uh, that you know what you're doing with us, and uh, thank you that you do provide for us. And thank you for all that you've given us, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have we heard anything on that church for Thanksgiving or not really? Um, no. Um, I went there. Nobody was there. Um, I was going to call. When was that? Yesterday, but it was way too late. And I was like, I don't know where I was. Well, really when I talked to him, it was late, so you can call him. I mean, you could probably call him tonight, yeah. But, you know, if it's, I, I talked to him, it was after, what, 8.30, hmm. something like yeah. that. Okay. And he got right back what to me. Wow. Is this yeah. new? Is this what we're so, okay. next yeah. Give, give it a shot. We don't have a... Uh, I thought that's where we